All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. What a load of ball, episode 42. Um, sorry for the hiatus. I haven't really been doing much to the car, so there hasn't been anything to really film and upload. Been waiting for today. Um, those long-term viewers will know that you don't get to see my ugly mug unless I'm up to something special. And today we're actually starting the manual swap on the stage. So I couldn't be more excited. This has been two years pretty much in the making. Um, I finished for the summer on Friday. Obviously I work, work at college, lecture in engineering, particularly motorsport engineering. Uh, and very fortunately I've uh, been given permission to use the workshop. So gonna get the car in in a minute. I'm not used to this whole selfie vlogging type thing, so sorry if I'm not looking at the camera or, or whatever. I'm not going to be doing it for the whole series, but I am planning to be doing daily videos, daily uploads, covering all the major steps for the manual conversion. Um, uh, just a reminder on that one, we're doing a five-speed all-wheel drive manual swap. So the gearbox has come from an R32 GTR. Um, it's got a VQ flange welded on that. Big thanks to Jean-Francois Valland of Takumi Auto Works. I'll put their link down below if you're up north or need to travel for good work. He's a good guy. Um, so yeah, I'll put those details down there. But before I bought my car in, I thought I'd do a little bit of a tour on some of the toys I get to play with at work. So I don't really teach the subject, but we've got a nice head protester here. So my students will bring in a head and one of their assignments is to kind of port and polish it to get the, the maximum gains out of that one. Um, and then I've got something very special over here and some people might have seen pictures of this uh, on my Instagram and stuff, but this is Esme, this is the mistress. So Esme is a Caterham 7. She was built by RLM. Um, RLM are a Hayabusa engine specialist. These guys are absolute legends. So. Um, yeah, big up Rich, big up Dan. Uh, d those of you that know about Hayabusa, it's a 1300 Suzuki motorbike engine. This one's fully built. Uh, it's bored and stroked. It's a 1.6, fully forged, titanium exhaust. Uh, we run a Life ECU, and then all the AIM uh, ecosystem electronics. So PDM, data logger, or the PDM is the data logger rather, <coughs> dash display. We've got Tim Gray Motorsports, pneumatic shifting. Um, we've been winning trophies. So we've got three trophies this season already. We raced this in the GT Championship at Castle Coombe. Castle Coombe uh, near Chippenham, uh, Southwest UK, or kind of Southwest UK, Wiltshire. Um, and that's our nearest circuit. So yeah, we've got a first in class on that one. And we've got two more of those at our last event. Um, we set a new class record, we won a race, we set a new class record of a 1 minute 6 at Castle Coombe and um, we're actually 9 thousandths of a second off of being the fastest ever 7 chassis around the circuit. So we're out again on the 3rd of August and we're hoping to get that record then. Uh, I think we've got it in it, the weather wasn't the best last time we went out but we still did really well. Um, big up to Beats Working, long time uh, friends and supporters of me and what I do, uh, sound system stuff, grip tape for footwells and that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions about this or if you want to follow us in particular, we share most stuff from Instagram and Facebook. We are mo at Motorsport BTC. Obviously I work at Bridgewater and Taunton College in Somerset in the southwest of UK, which is also or incorporates the University Centre Somerset, and that's the division that I work for, um, the Motorsport Engineering Foundation degree. Uh, a couple of other cars that we've got in the arsenal, or just... So this is Fifi, um, and if you didn't know, we had a savage workshop fire a few years ago, and we lost Poppet, our old race car, our Radical up there, a number of customer cars. Uh, Fifi, though, the Phoenix, was one car which survived the fire because she was parked in the trailer around the corner. Um, so yeah, my student's going to be building a, a chassis harness, engine harness for this one. We've got full ECU master electronics for it. Um, looking to replicate the types of things which are in Esme, uh, but uh, ECU master. Then we have got Boris the Bewley. So Bewley, uh, I believe the chapter called George Bewley. Um, he builds these or built a, a load of these back in the day. 
Um, we bought this. Um, it's really, it's never going to see the track again, but it's great for doing chassis setup and getting learners, getting used to working with big fairings and things like that. Uh, what else have we got? So, uh, another shout out to Grand Prix Race Wear, who were based at Silverstone. Um, they have a big Ferrari team and during COVID their Ferrari team or their Ferrari series was canceled. So they got involved in a TT series. Um, post COVID, once their normal series was back up and running, they sold their TTs and we have bought them. So we've got this one, we've got this one. We've got another rolling show and another workshop. Tons and tons of stuff. These are being rebuilt by our students as project works might see tracks again but um we are a college so we can't afford to go racing everything but these are a great resource for our learners to work on because they get used to working around roll cages and things like that oh I'm not sure she's got a name but this is our competition Clio um my colleague and his students run this car uh, with a, another colleague Luke who drives it um, this is being raced in the Gersten Down Hill Climb Championship. Uh, we've been winning our, our series with that as well, so doing really, really well. And then we've got a couple of other cars which are more used for uh, typical sort of mechanical tasks which learners need to do for the assignments. Oh, so back in the game. Um, I did have the workshop already with lots of workspace clear since uh, the pack testers have been in and nothing's tidy. So I'm going to have a quick tidy up, get the car in. Got students arriving very soon, hopefully to help. Uh, order of play today is to unload the car, do a bit of a tour of all the new parts. Uh, we're then going to weigh the car because I'd really like to know how much it actually weighs. Uh, this will help me work out approximately the horsepower of what it was before all the upgrades based on the weight and quarter mile times and it will help me calculate the horsepower when I come to do future drag racing. That's obviously if I haven't made it to a dyno in time. Uh, so yeah, weigh it. Uh, and then by the end of the day, I would really like to have the old gearbox out. Um, the new gearbox is gonna have to go in and out, in and out, lots of test fitting, lots of fabrication and stuff that's required. So it's not gonna be very straightforward. Um, so yeah, if we can get the, the old box out today, I'll be happy. So. Bear with me, once I'm a bit more set up, I'll bring you up to speed. But yeah, I just wanted to do a, an introduction video before the lads were here and uh, I was holding them up by filming. So uh, enjoy the series. If you haven't done already, please subscribe. There's going to be lots of these videos coming up. Uh, I've blocked out two weeks for this. Um, you'll see what's involved once we get the car on the hoist. This isn't just a straight fit. There's lots of fab that's going to be needed. Lots of under and over. Um, so yeah, blocked out two weeks. If we get it done sooner than that, happy days. If not, we have two weeks, so uh, it's going to be a long ride. And like I said, I will be trying to do daily uploads. Right, um, let's go. Okay, we're all unloaded. Um, here is the unicorn that is the R32 GTR 5 speed with the VQ flange welded onto it. I don't think I've done a tour of the parts that we're about to do before, so I thought I'd do it now. Got an OS Gaiken triple plate clutch and flywheel, which came with it. Got an LSD from a winter edition uh, M35 Stagia. Got the gearbox. This is a custom shaft for the rear to go from output flange to the diff. I've got a, this labeled as an R34 GTR front prop. This will need cutting and shutting. Um, the length is going to be slightly off and I need the VQ end on that end or this end. Not sure. We'll work that out. But that is one limitation of, or that's not going to be in the scope of the next two weeks, I think, is that we're not going to have um, the time to get the new drive shaft back. So we'll get that measured, but I'm half expecting it to be uh, real drive manual for a little while. Um, got a centre console out of a V35 Skyline, which I actually bought from a Polish chap who lived in New Zealand, so that one's done some miles. Got our transmission brace, going to hopefully make this look a bit prettier before it goes in. 
Uh, and then some fathoming that we need to do. If you look here, you can see uh, that we, a previous chap had to do this in order to get the shifter. This is going to appear around about under the stereo. So what I've done is bought a Nismo quick shift. Uh, thank you, Talk GT. Uh, Matt in particular for confirming fitment and things like that. So appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be cutting this one. And then this will be mounted where it needs to go. And then we'll make a tie rod or a turnbuckle to link the shifter to the quick shift. Although this is functional, I'm not down with it and I don't think it will look very good. And I think it'll be an absolute nightmare to actually fit the box in the car with that in situ. So we will measure this to get a rough idea of where things are going to be. Then we know where we need to cut things like that. Um, da -da -da -da. So yeah, I think we are all good. Uh, obviously we'll need to redo the pedal boxes as well. So we've got a clutch pedal and a new brake pedal there from a 350Z. Going to have to do some drilling in order to get the new master cylinder there. Got the slave cylinder, which I panicked about, but that's in the box, along with some random bolts. Uh, so next thing we're going to do now is to weigh the car, um, and then we can start on uh, doing some electrical testing, uh, and then we can start ripping out the old gearbox. Okay, so we're using the intercomp scales. These are a wireless system. Um, awesome okay so about 1800 kilos so there's no LPG in the car there's about a quarter of a tank I weigh 70 kilos um, I'm not going to jump in the car I was going to weigh it with it in me let's have a look at what the numbers are saying cool well I'm happy with that I'm not worrying about corner weighting it now I know that it weighs 1800 kilos. Um, I'll put information down below or based, I'll do the calculation and add it in there based on weighing that much and my speeds from when I did some drag racing before. Cool, so um, we're gonna get it back in the air now, start doing some electrical tests, um, get the scales out of the way, and then we'll start ripping out the gearbox. Ta da We are in the air. And that is one of the most terrifying things a car owner can do is to put the car in the air on a ramp. So, we've got some leads up here which we need to check. Um, these, these, and these. These are the signals which come from the gearbox. Um, so, yeah, I just want to confirm. Well, I know which ones are park and neutral, uh, but I need to just try and fathom a bit of a reverse. Um, now, there's less access there than I thought there was going to be. So that's going to take some thinking. And then we also need to check what's going on in the distributor end. So I'm thinking I'll probably keep most of this loom, but then cut and splice past that. A lot of that's all for solenoid control, which doesn't matter to us anyway. Um, here's the turbo, a couple of years on. You know, the turbo blankets all looking in good condition. Got the custom Giz Fab exhausts. Uh, so it's looking a bit worse for wear, but that's a rural summer set for you. While the car's off, I'm going to get this cut and welded here just to give me a little bit more clearance because you can see that's where I catch. Same with the back as well, if possible. Okay, so just doing a bit of a refresher with the manual. We've worked out where our neutral switch is coming from. There's not much room in the vehicle to actually get to that, so we're going to run with that. The other fathom is the reverse signal, and I'm not entirely sure where it comes from. <laughs> so we have got this. I think it's this reverse relay, which is ah, pin 41 on the trans control. So I think what we're going to have to do is interrupt that signal with our new one, um, which will then trigger this relay, which will then turn on our reverse lamp. Um, 
So it looks like that's a ground switch. So if we follow this, the ignition relay comes live to this junction center behind left side of dash, energizes this relay solenoid or provides power for it. And then when blue goes to ground, pulls that solenoid shut and then that goes and turns on the lamp. Yellow, red being the live, half of it ready on pin two for the relay, half of it to actually close that contact. Cool, so I can confirm that that needs to be ground switched. And then if we come back, looking at park neutral, um, we'll fathom that out later on. I know where that pin is. I think we're keen to get things ripped out. So, what are we gonna do first? Um, start draining fluid, getting the exhaust out of the way, to clearing as much space as we can. Uh, once we've got everything out of the way, or later on in the project, we will do a bit of more wax oiling from places where we couldn't get to before. Um, essentially, the main issue is the Atessa is in the wrong place. So the new gearbox is a lot shorter, meaning the Atessa system sits further forward. So we need to do some cutting and shutting in this region here. And I've got a friend of mine coming to help with that tomorrow. So I kind of need to be as ready as possible for when he gets here. Uh, so I'm going to start draining stuff. I might lift it up a bit higher because my neck's already hurting. So uh, watch the space. So we are doing well. Exhaust is almost out. We've got the cross brace out of the way. Just trying to make space so that we can start taking other things out. About to do something either really clever or really stupid. I'll let you know in a minute. These are the feeds to the trans cooler, obviously. And there's quite a lot of fl fluid that's still in the torque converter. So I'm planning to cut one of these, put an airline on it, force air that way into the system, which should force fluid back out into my catch. So it's either going to be the most genius thing I've ever done or incredibly messy and I'll regret it in five minutes. So watch this space. Okay, so that did work as intended. I think we've got as much gearbox fluid out of the system as we possibly can. Did make a bit of mess, did get a bit of fluid in my eyes, uh, but we're all clear now. Um, so we're gonna have a quick break and then come back and assess the situation and start to think about the next bits to get out. So it might be that we do this rear prop uh kind of work our way forward so uh yeah back in a sec all right we're doing well uh rear prop is out front prop is also out harness harness is all disconnected got one zip tie at the top that we can't actually reach right now but everything is good they will pop over so i think we're going to start taking out things like starter motor um and then, yeah, we're, we're doing really well. Sorry, I haven't been filming for a while, so I keep going out of frame. I do apologize on that. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be on target for today. Gonna disconnect this one. This is the feed for, from the Atessa Reservoir. We've got a squidgy line, squidgy-ish line here. Hard line, which goes up over the tank into the rear in the boot. But yeah, kicking ass. Okay, hard to make out, but there was a little access hatch in here. And we've removed that now so that we can get to the torque converter bolts. And in order to rotate the engine, I've got a 20 mil socket on the crank. And now we've got access to do that. So we're gonna get that done and then get the starter motor off, get everything propped up, then do the rest and it should just float out. Okay, so luckily we're in a fully equipped workshop because we needed one extension, two, three, four, and a wobbly socket to get to that final bolt. And we were approaching that from all the way back here. So we think that is the last bolt. We're going to get the pry bar out again and then hopefully the gearbox will just fly on out. Right, right, we are so close now. We've got that last bolt out. You can see where we're at. Dipstick mount. So we've undone that one. 
there's another one there which we've missed so think that that's what's holding it in once that's out of the way it should all come out and hopefully not fall on my head and that guys is what the flex paint looks like of a vq 25 det fuck yeah uh big big thank you to harvey who's one of my students he's been with me all day and i would not have been able to do this without him uh, you can see where I've managed to reach with the wax all previously. Uh, we will be doing more of that later on in the week. But for today's target of getting the old gearbox out, we have nailed it. Uh, I'm just going to wander over and we'll have a look at it now that it's out and then do a bit of comparison between old and new. Okay, so here we are. Here is the auto that has been removed. Got the At Atessa transfer case here. Uh, valve body underneath obviously we've just measured it new ones about five inches shorter from flange to flange a uh, bit awkward to weigh them individually but obviously we know our starting point with uh, the weight with this one in so I am I'm happy for the most part um, tomorrow because I'm gonna call it a day for today Tomorrow we will start offering up this. In fact, I might do a little bit. We've got, got about an hour today. So we might get the flex plate off just so that that's done and dusted. Um, but then tomorrow will be all about offering up the new gearbox to work out where the bulge is. Because I'll show you where we think that's going to be. We've got this kind of indent here. And I know uh, previous project lead so they had to cut and shut some stuff so i think we'll be around about this area uh so probably first thing tomorrow we'll start taking out the interior the seats and carpet getting ready to cut and weld uh and then i'm guessing somewhere along here is where the gearbox is going to poke up we've got a lot more room than i was expecting so i'm happy about that uh, this will probably get blanked off and then we'll mount my new shifter on top of that uh so I don't think I need to film any more today. Uh, we've got these bolts to get out. We'll put a breaker bar on the other end to stop the engine turning while we do that. So yeah, just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed day one of the all-wheel drive M35 manual conversion. Um, Monday today, probably going to edit this Tuesday night, get it uploaded on Tuesday. We'll be about a week behind. So uh, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm um, hoping you're enjoying the project so far. A lot more to come. Wish us luck. Thanks a lot.